All right, so clearly I've had a complete, completely shit Q2 2020 so far. Uh, those of you who follow my Twitter know the story. I had, so originally I had 40K of Facebook call options. Now these were up over 100%. Uh, so I was positive. And then I sold them in order to buy Snapchat calls. Now all of you guys know what happened with that. I ended up losing 40K. I put 60K down and then I lost 40K of that. So basically I wasted all my Facebook profits on the Snapchat thing. And then I was too pussy to back, buy back in for Facebook when they reported earnings, as you saw in my other vid, and they completely knocked it out of the park. So instead of being up like however many, like hundreds of thousands, I'm like, I'm like flat and I've lost the money I made previously on Facebook calls. So yeah, this is a complete, complete fail. Um, but we're gonna make it all up. <laughs> or, or so I think uh, when Roku reports on Wednesday. Now I am. All right. So, so if when I reflect on what Wall Street was actually looking for, so if you look back on Snap, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, I was way too focused on the revenues and the earnings numbers, uh, and I think Wall Street was not at all focused on that. They were much more looking at the monthly active users, the daily active users. So even when you know they beat on the revenue if they miss or they just like meet on MAU, DAU, then Wall Street would react to that because I, I think everyone sort of knows that this quarter is just an aberration. If there's no imminent bankruptcy risk, the earnings doesn't really matter that much. So, but for Roku, they don't have, there's no MAU, DAU for Roku really. They have active streaming accounts, they have streaming hours, but those should be uh, relatively well known. Um, and even if they aren't, the, the numbers are good, as I'll sh show you later. So we can really just focus on, I think, actually just focus on revenue and EPS. If we assume that the um, active accounts number and the streaming hours numbers are good. So why don't we go into it here? All right. So before we get into anything, I guess I'll show you my positions here. Now, this is not Robin Hood, so it's going to be hard <laughs> to read, I imagine, for many of you. But uh, the relevant portions are this. I bought the 145 call. It, these are spreads, and then I sell some of the later stuff. And then I sold some puts, and I bought. These are also spreads. I, I guess you, this is just proving that I have a long position. You, know, you don't really have to understand what's going on here. It's just to show my position for full disclosure. Anyways, uh, now we look at Roku. This is actually sort of my favorite part about it, is that it's actually not at all-time highs. If you look at any other stock that was going in earnings, they were... I mean, the tech stocks that our demographic we look at, they were all at all-time highs, so they had to contend with fairly high expectations and stuff like that. Roku does not have that problem, really. I mean, they were, they're were they still lower than where they were September 2nd of last year, um, so this is still looking fairly decent. Now, when we take a look at the expectations for Roku, now this is the best part, I think. They expected to grow year over year for Q2 around 25.6%. And uh, this is this is why I like that number. When you take a look at Roku's financials, so um, their their revenues are broken up into two parts: the player revenue and the platform revenue. Uh, earlier in an earlier video, I went over differences between these, but just very quickly, TLDR: player revenue is like when they sell a TV, when they sell a stick, um, the, the hardware side of it, and platform revenue is the AVOD and the SVOD stuff stuff like that. Now, what, that's like when they sell ads or when a subscription is made on their platform. It's it's that sort of stuff. So player revenue is just purely hardware and that's usually the lower end. And that's that was up 22% year over year. Now, this I feel like is the section of its revenue that is more easily uh, looked at when you just look at something like Google Trends. So if we take a look at the Google Trends for, I, I pulled up two things. I pulled up Roku and I pulled up Smart TV, and what we want to see here is the bump caused by the stay-at-home orders related to COVID, and whether or not it has abated since um, since initial since the uh, the lockdown started. Now, what we saw with Snapchat and others is, uh, I guess no. What we saw with Snapchat, what we didn't see with Twitter is that they guided something initially in May, and then it turns out that you know as the lockdown went on, people were not messaging as much. Uh, with each other on Snapchat as they were in the beginning. So their expectations for 
the impact of COVID upon their business was uh, wrong. Um, Twitter was not the case. People were still using it uh, more and more, actually, as it went on. But again, that has to do with, you know, riots, news events, other stuff like that. So we want to see, you know, relatively stable um, from the initial expectations to where we are now. And I mean, I think this looks this looks very good in terms of um, if you, this, this is the five year chart, right? So you can see these peaks are um, Black Friday and Christmas. So you, you can compare that with the rest of the year. It's usually, you know, it's it's a it's a it's a U <laughs> in between in between holiday seasons. And there's and but that's not what we see here. Either. There's a there's a massive bump um, related to lockdowns. I think this is everybody sort of understands that maybe they're looking for more electronic. They're looking for TVs, I guess, <laughs> during lockdown. Maybe they're trying to buy TVs, but the, the hardware was always looking good. I think they said in their earnings statement last time that hardware looking good. Now, if, if the hardware just covers the 25% of itself, we just need the platform revenue to be anywhere above the 25% number. And that seems like sort of a walk in the park here. Um, it was up 73%, uh, what do you call it, year over year for Q1. And the declines we saw for the other advertising players were certainly not anywhere on anywhere in like the 50% range, um, <laughs> which it would need to in order for miss. So, I mean, this seems uh, pretty chill. And that's not even it. So platform revenue is not all ads. So again, Roku does this platform revenue is broken out into multiple parts. One is ad sub so AVOD, which is ad supported video on demand, and uh, SVOD is subscription supported video on demand, and that stuff is up. So this is when, like, if you sign up for Disney Plus, on your TV Roku gets a cut, and so on and so forth. And again, Disney Plus was not around for Q2 2019. Um, it was a big part of their platform revenue. Uh, for Q1, so we have not lapped Disney Plus yet. So I mean, that's that's definitely looking good there. And um, I feel like numbers <laughs> in general are good. Now let's, let's, I guess we had to take a look more in in general in regards to the overall ad business, especially in Roku's category, which is they're 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 categorized as CTV connected TV and. Um, when marketers look at this, they definitely broke it. So let me just pull up some stats here. All right, so there's really two things here uh, when it comes to CTV spend that I like to point out. Um, these are this is data provided by IAB. I think it's um, uh, what is it International Advertising Bureau or something. Anyways, so this is uh, video dollar spend the graph. Now this is pre and post COVID. You see here so. CTV, it looked like it was relatively unscathed versus other video formats. You see a massive downturn, whether it's digital desktop video or mobile video. And it, I mean, it looks like it was pretty resilient here um, based off the graph that we see. And also the second thing is um, when, when you talk to advertisers nowadays, especially, especially because a huge part of the quarter, we're talking June here, uh, was actually like COVID was not the main story. There was a huge portion of the quarter in which the, the main story was what happened with George Floyd, the Black Lives Matter stuff. And this is where I think Rook gets an extra edge because they have excellent, oh, this is what advertisers call brand safety. Um, this is This is where is it okay for an advertiser to advertise on this platform? Is this is this platform you're advertising on associated with things you don't want to be associated with? If you're talking about a news feed type platform, we're talking about Twitter, we're talking about Facebook, uh, you obviously don't want um, your video promoting your company's, maybe your company's efforts towards going towards carbon neutrality next to a video where you see people beating each other up or you know a huge fire or anything like that. Now, there's problems. Obviously, Facebook has this problem. Obviously, Twitter has this problem. Um, and then YouTube also has this sort of problem when you, because, you know, they place ads in front of a video and YouTube, it might serve that ad in front of a video, which the advertiser doesn't like. And uh, these are all problems with those major platforms. Roku really does not have this platform yet. No one ever says anything about, um, 
<laughs> boycotting Roku ads. That doesn't really make sense. Uh, so that seems pretty chill for Roku here. Uh, if you have any marketers pulling back from social media spend uh, in terms of the boycotts on these other platforms, they could definitely be spending here because there's really no problem with advertising on the Roku platform. Um, and again, in July, even though obviously the boycott had no impact on Facebook revenue and they stated as much and Facebook soared, but that, that, that small chunk of revenue means a lot for these smaller players. You saw that with Pinterest. They, they, I think they almost explicitly stated that they were benefiting from the boycott at, over at Facebook for July. And I imagine you'll see much of the same thing here. This is, when it comes to digital advertisements, this is one of the safest places, quote unquote, you know, for a, a potential advertiser to put their ad. So it's also looking good there. Um, and really, really, that's pretty much it. So again, just to wrap things up, why I'm in. I think the estimates here are low, and also they're very variable. I understand that Roku did not give any sort of guidance. Now, almost every company, when they reported Q1, pulled guidance, but many other companies, they stated what was happening in April for them. Roku declined to do that. They did not state anything. So this is a sort of a complete shot in the dark by analysts back in April, uh, sort of, you know, you know, back in May, guessing what's going to happen for the quarter so i think this is this is old and also it, it's sort of it's really a shot in the dark and um the second thing is you know the price is not at all-time highs so you don't need a tremendous beat for it to go up uh the third is the google trend stuff looks really good it looks like it's maintained its momentum it's achieved since the beginning of covid and the last thing is but just based off of um the breakdowns here uh, you have a significant portion of Roku revenue coming from hardware. It looks like that will be up. And then is the platform revenue, I don't think it's going to decline from 73 down to 25 or anything like that. So uh, that that's pretty much it. Uh, let's see if I can make back the money I was losing on Snapchat. Uh, if not, I am unironically deleting this account. <laughs> All right, let's see what happens on uh, Wednesday.